Hey, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install a WordPress site in a subdomain of your current WordPress site. And what I mean by this is at the front of your domain, where you usually have the www, I'm going to install a site at support.wp-phd.com. And essentially what it is, is it's another completely different website that has a completely different dashboard, completely different everything. It can even be a different technology. It doesn't have to be a WordPress site. It could be whatever technology is required and you can install it as a subdomain. We're gonna show you how right now. So the way you do this is we go into the cPanel for the website. In this case, we're in the InMotion cPanel and we find the subdomains icon or link. We click on it and then we type in the subdomain that we want. In my case, I wanted support. This is what's gonna come before the domain name. And then you choose which domain to assign it to. If there's multiple, make sure you, ch you choose the right one. And then when you tab out of that first box, it'll autofill the folder where the contents of the site will go. In this case, it will go in support. Now, if we quickly check what that will look like, if we go to our cPanel and then the file manager, we see that th these are the contents of our WP-PhD site right here. And what it will do is if it adds a folder right here at support, it's just gonna add a new folder that is just in line with, with these. And I think that's totally fine. That's fine by me, but you can add this folder wherever you want it to go. I'd just leave it there. But then we click on create to create that subdomain. Then we get a message, success message, and we have our new subdomain right here. Now, if we go to our subdomain again, refresh the page, there's still not gonna be a whole lot because we haven't actually installed anything, but we do see it worked because it says index of nothing. So it's, uh, it's, this is implying there should be something here, but there isn't yet. So what you can do is you can actually uh, redirect this subdomain if you want to. If you don't actually wanna build a site right here, but you wanna redirect this URL to somewhere else, you can do that by managing the redirection you have a similar option, your hosting account might not be called exactly that, but we're gonna build an actual site here. And the way we do that is we go into our cPanel account, click on reload, and we have our new support folder here. We're just gonna open it, there's nothing here right now. I'm gonna head over to WordPress and get a new copy of the wordpress.org files. Gonna download those guys, and we have them downloaded. Gonna go back here, click on the upload link, and I'm just gonna find this file in my, on my hard drive. I'm gonna drag and drop it onto the dotted box. It uploads. Once it's 100%, we can just close this tab. Then we reload this section again. We have those that zip file right here. If we click on it and then click on extract, it'll extract the zip file to this folder, the folder it's currently in, which is what we want. Click on extract files, it gives us a list. You can read through those if you want. I don't recommend it. Uh, then we click on reload to see those changes and it adds our WordPress folder. Now what we don't want is to keep those files there. What we wanna do is make sure we go into this WordPress folder and we select all these files and we move them out by clicking the move button, move them up one folder so it's in the support folder, click on move files. And now we have them all out here. I'm gonna delete that WordPress folder, delete the zip file. I just held control down and click them both to select them both. And now we have our WordPress files here. We have to create a database and add the credentials to the config file. So let's do that really quick. Go back to our cPanel, click on MySQL databases. I'm just gonna call the new database support and a bunch of random characters. The only reason I do this is so that if I'm looking at a big list of databases, I know what they are. That's the only reason I add in the word support. So I'm just gonna make a note of that over here. DB name is that. And I'm gonna get a DB username and a DB password. Click on go back to make those. I like to start my username with the same thing I start my password with. So I'm gonna start as sup, just a bunch of random characters. This host only uh, limits usernames to 10 characters. So you can't put too much in here. I'm just gonna copy that because it always, when I choose a password, actually that's gonna fail. Anyway, I'm gonna copy this password here. It's a nice looking password. 
And then I'm gonna retype that because it always puts it in default again. And then I'm gonna click on create user. Passwords don't match. Put the new password in because I copied that as well. Having LastPass is great, but sometimes it's a pain when it autofills stuff like that. Uh, so I have my password. I'm gonna paste that right in here. I'm gonna copy that username and paste it right in there. Then go back. Now we have our database credentials and we just gotta link it to our website. We have the WP config sample file right here. I'm gonna click on code editor and then edit. And then we're gonna copy these over. Copy the database name, copy the username, copy the password, then click on save changes. We can close this file. We rename this to just config or wp config, sorry, .php. And now if we refresh this page, everything went well, this is gonna be a WordPress installation or we get this. So what this is, I missed an important step. I didn't actually add the user to the database. So we have our two users here. If yours aren't the right ones in these two fields, pick the correct user in the correct database from these dropdowns and then click on add. And I usually choose all privileges for things like this and click on make changes. And now that was a successful transaction. Now we refresh this page and it still didn't work. So clearly I didn't put my credentials incorrectly into this file. Click on code editor again. And you probably saw this while I was doing this in the video, but I didn't actually replace that. See, so this was live. You could have told me, hey, you didn't do that but it's recorded, so you couldn't do that. So I'm gonna click on copy, replace the database name, and save this again, close this. Now if I refresh, now we get the installation page, which is fantastic. Uh, keep it in English for me, choose whatever language you want, and then you just install WordPress like you normally would. It's gonna call this support. I'm gonna copy this so I can actually log in afterwards, and then finish off this form, click on install, and now we're logged right into that brand new dashboard. So let's review. We go to wpphd.com and we're gonna have our website as it was before, and that's great. Now if we go to support.wpphd.com, we have a second website as a subdomain. And you can do this for however many subdomains as you want, as long as your host has enough bandwidth to do that for you. And it's really limitless. So that's how we create a new WordPress site and a subdomain of your existing WordPress site. I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, share on social media, and check out wplearninglab.com where I publish more WordPress tutorials like this every single day. Talk to you soon.